Welcome back. This is a follow-up video to one of my Arduino tutorials, a uh, tutorial where I showed you how to connect Unity or Visual Studio to uh, a Arduino project, or even just control a Arduino project with your homemade uh, app. And uh, I took my old project. It's something like this. It's a Arduino with a network adapter and the top shield is just a prototype uh, board. It's just like uh, one of these uh, except it's stuck on. I got a LED on and a resistor. I got a wiring just for powering because my uh, battery has run out. So a wire for the internet so it's actually connected to the internet. The code I'm using is actually the, exactly the same as we used in in the previous video, and uh, it, the link to the previous video is in the description. Also, the link to the code. The code is just waiting for a UDP signal input uh, from anywhere on the internet uh, to this device. So. If you remember, you could send a signal, and we made it so it would accept a sim input starting with an L, one for turning a lamp on, two for turning it, toggling it. That's right, and a zero for turning it off. Uh, what I've made since, and I'll show you the code in a minute, is a uh, mobile app. So. Let's get the accelerometer to turn the app correctly. There we go. And if you haven't seen the previous video, you remember this app. <laughs> well, if you have seen the previous video. We made this on Windows. And uh, since it's Unity, we can make it work on all devices. However, because I don't have Unity Pro for Android, I cannot make a network connection using sockets for Android. However, there's a workaround. I bought a add-on for Unity in the their web shop and this allowed me to work with sockets and uh, just like as if I had Pro and it cost me I think it was $20 so that's very cheap compared to getting a Unity Pro for small projects like this. Uh, the phone just went on standby. There we go. Yes. So, the way it works is when I click on, I'm going to click on, let's see if I can hit the button. There we go. It turns the LED on. It might be hard to see. There we go. This way. And when I turn off, click off. There we go. It turns off. Back on. Off, you can see it's almost instantly. Almost, and not every press registers. That's because we are sending UDP signals through uh, the internet. So the mobile phone is not connected to Wi Fi, it's connected only through the cellular network right now. So when I click on the signal, is sent from this phone to a nearby mast, to a satellite or cable, I don't know, to the phone company to my ISP, probably the same company anyway, then back through the cable to my router. And I end up with this. And it's I'm, I'm actually quite impressed because it's almost instantly. Uh, when you restart the app and press first the first time, it takes 5 to 10 seconds uh, for the Arduino to actually react. And that's that's Obvious. That's because it needs to tunnel the connection. Uh, but once it has done that, it's well instantly <laughs> very impressive. Uh, uh, no complaints there. The code on the Arduino itself is the code that's exactly the same code as we used in our previous project, uh, connecting the Arduino with Unity, and it's linked in the description. I'm linking it to my website as well. Uh, uh, 
If I haven't, I will make a form post where you can just copy paste the code. You don't need to register to copy paste it. Uh, also, the code for the form is a. Uh, I'll show you in a minute. Before that, we need to take care of a few things. And the first thing is routing. Uh, for all of this to actually just work, you need to route uh, route your system. There we go, and let's uh, let's open up my uh, router connection. It, uh, that's the strange thing when you're connecting to your router, even though it's right there. You can see this long delay waiting for the router. There we go. <laughs> and then you get something like that. We know it's almost instant. I have several routers in my network. Uh, this one we're looking at right now is just for this room. And that's because I connect all sorts of things to it sometimes. But I also got a router that's a modem from my ISP. Then I have a router for uh, TVs and such. And public use and then I have a personal router and then I have this one you know, I like to to make mix things up a bit but <laughs> point is if you have one or multiple routers doesn't matter you need to route your connection to the Arduino in my case I have a fixed IP address that makes everything much easier because my IP I need to put into my phone is always the same most people have dynamic IPs by default because it's cheaper for the ISP to set up the claim. I don't believe them. It's not going to cost them anything, but that's just the way things work. When you know your IP, and then you need to set up your port system on your Arduino, and if you remember the code, I do. The Arduino is accepting input on uh, port 5000. However, on this computer I'm already using port 5000. Or I think it's some games like uh, Battlefield or something. They actually use port 5000 for something else. But this is, consider this as a computer in itself. It's going to use the same port for something else. So. Get into your application and gaming if you're having a Linksys. Most routers have the same setup or very similar. It's either called gaming or something or it's called port forwarding or something along those lines. And you just want single port forwarding. So you can see I have this entry called Arduino 177. I have this external port called 3750. That's because I'm sending a signal to my public IP at that port. When I'm sending to that port, that means I actually want to send to this device. If I wanted to send to uh, a new device, you can see I add a new line and give it a new number. That means I'm sending to another device. It's actually that simple. Internal port, you can see uh, my Arduino has internal port 5000. That means this device is just waiting for input on port 5000. If I added another device, it's waiting on input on port... <laughs> Holy crap, that's a lot of ports. Input on port 5000 as well. You can see they have different IP addresses. The one called 177 is this one. 178 is offline. Uh, that means when I send something, I would send something to my... I'm just typing a random IP, something like this. It's four numbers. And after the last number, I would enter a colon. And then I would send to, as you can see on the screen, seven. There we go. And then I would send the message to that number. That means the router will get to that port. And then forward it to this IP address on this port. So... It might be a bit confusing, but actually, the router is just just like the post office. So, and these are postcodes. So, if you're sending something to a postcode, this postcode, the post office knows this also means this number for this device. Mm, you could also do something like this. This could cause a problem, and. Uh, 
because a device usually can accept multiple signals on uh, the same port, but it could cause some sort of interference, so you don't want to do that. Anyway, router setup. This is the only line you need to concern yourself about. Input, external port, that's the port people are sending to. Internal port is the port the router is sending to. And this is your device. I hope it wasn't too confusing. I'm sure it was. But, yeah. Tough luck. Let's, uh, let's get into... Um, let's see, that's Unity 5, Unity 4. There we go. Booting up Unity. And you can see on screen I actually have the, the thing running. And the code is uh, exactly like last time. Let's uh, get Mono Developer running. The add-on I uh, bought in the Unity Store is called Good Old Sockets. <coughs> Excuse me. And Good Old Sockets allows me to use uh, Pro Features, uh, Sockets Features in a mobile device. And for some reason, Unity has decided not to enable that by default. So if you were to create a uh, application for your Android, I actually suggest not using Unity because I don't think you should pay additional six hundred dollars for just having a bit of fun or making some test projects. Uh, you can do like do like me. Uh, I actually have Unity Pro for yeah PC. Mac, web, whatever, but uh, I don't have Unity Pro for mobile development, meaning if I wanted to develop Pro for my mobile apps, I would have to pay additional $600 in it, at least, actually, I think it's more. In addition to the, I think I already paid more than $1,000 because I had Unity Pro 3, Unity Pro 4, and I have Unity Pro 5 in pre-order, so... Yeah, they got my money. Anyway, the code is exactly like last time. It's the same. I haven't changed anything except up here. You can see the system.net, the system.net sockets have added this called the lost polygon. And that's from this uh, add-on I found in the shop. And actually, when I found my scripts, I was able to just right-click them, and I could patch them. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I can also unpatch them, which means it's going to remove the the text. Uh, sorry, the text right here. And uh, this patch feature is awesome because if you are developing something that contains a lot of scripts, instead of having to go through every script you've written that's using connections, uh, you can just right click the folder and patch the entire scripts folder. That's pretty cool. That's a very nice design. Anyway, after building for uh, Android, I uh, won't really go into building for Android right now, but once building, upload your APK to uh, your device. I'm not sure you can do that on uh, iPhones because they are locked by default. Of course, uh, Androids are locked by default, but you just have to go into settings and enable developer mode. That allows you to run your own uh, APKs directly on your phone. And one thing I forgot, so let's just get Unity back. That was the, the IP addresses. If you remember, I had this controller, and the reason I had that was because I could edit this real fast. So you can see I have my public IP, my port, which we just went through on my router, and a return port. We're not using that for the mobile device, because there is a security layer preventing uh, my Arduino to send a return signal to my phone. So we're ignoring that, and that is why the toggle button has been disabled. Because if you remember on PC, when we clicked toggle, I'm not sure it's going to run here, but we can try. Uh, when you click toggle, it will turn this one yellow or 
Oh, it actually works. So let's uh, let's enable the toggle. Um, where was the enable function? There we go. Hit play. Toggle. And you can see it actually froze. It's not able to send the return signal to the router. That's not really uh, the phone's or Unity's fault. That's my router preventing the output from the Arduino. Uh, but you know, when you're sending a signal on Windows, it actually pops up a message: "Do you want? Uh, do you want to enable this exception in your firewall?" Well, the router, on my router at least, I, I also am running a firewall, and I have an additional firewall on the external router. Meaning, uh, it's preventing these outbound signals, and that's just to prevent some spoofing and viewing stuff you don't want people to view. So that's fine. It works just like last time. You remember, Unity is is not frozen. It's not uh, just not responding anymore. So we have to end it manually. That's basically it. I'll link the code for the Arduino and the code for Unity for the phone in the description and I'll also link the old video where we did the setup, initial setup, so you can see how it's done. Thanks for watching, comment, rate, subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!